Hey everybody, so this is another video on Cal and then what I've done in this instance is I've built out Cal to an actual model like you can actually utilize it, train it as a model, utilize it for different data sets, etc. And then so what exactly is Cal? Just as a recap, so this notebook overall turns a data set into a measured snapshot of its embedding geometry, and then it synthesizes and trains a best fit classifier head for that specific data set, optionally refining the head's hyperparameters. In this instance, with the genetic algorithm, which I'll go over, it's designed to be fast, transparent, and production minded. So, why exactly does this exist? Because different data sets have different shapes, literally, different geometric shapes their separability, their curvature, their class imbalance, et cetera, all come into this equation and all are uh, individually make up the data set. And these are the ways and the parameters that the AI model actually looks at and measures the data set overall, right? So instead of forcing one universal head, Cal measures the data set, picks an appropriate head family, then trains it very quickly and then it optionally evolves its shape with a small genetic algorithm to squeeze out some additional extra accuracy with no backbone fine tuning needed whatsoever. So this takes a model, uh, takes a, first of all, it takes a snapshot of the data set, evaluates that data set. So it's kind of like, it's built out exactly like an agentic framework, literally, right? So takes a snapshot of the data set, looks at that data set, evaluates the data set, says, okay, here are the different heads that I have available for this data set. I pick uh, head C, uh, and then it picks head C, uh, and then from there trains that particular head because it knows that that particular head will be best for that particular data set. Uh, and then from there, we add on a genetic algorithm on top of that to mutate that to essentially just, I mean, honestly, squeeze out a little bit better accuracy uh, at the end. And I'll show, I'll showcase like all of that for you um, throughout the end of this. But I mean, accuracy is extremely high within this to, to begin with, right? But so I'm utilizing uh, in this instance, the data set called SciFar 100 is what I'm defaulting to, but you can change it to SciFar 10, Fashion MNIST, et cetera, right? Fa uh, SciFar 10 is, uh, to me, like kind of the, the most difficult data set that you can throw in a model. So it's made up of 100 classes, right? So far 100. And then all the classes are like animals or objects and or like, uh, like vehicles, uh, things like that, right? Uh, vehicles, trees, small mammals, reptiles, people, non insect vertebrae, insects. And then so like, uh, some some of these like can get and there's a crossover within this. And then some of these aren't labeled accurately, right? Uh, and then some of them can be bad. Like it can be uh, like a, a bowl of soup might look like a flower, right? Like, like things like that, just pointing out uh, that like there's a, like um, a reason why, like I don't think a human would get 100% accuracy on this particular data set as well, like with these labels and uh, is what I want to highlight within this particular data set overall, right? <laughs> and then yes, I know much like there's, and then there's, um, inaccuracies within this too overall right like like it, this this data set is not perfect <laughs> so so uh, highlighting that within this as we go through this but so bottom line that i want to showcase here within this for you is the results um and then so we go through and then so in this instance so sci-far 100 is a 10, 000, uh it's it's 10,000 total right so I, it's i break it up into 8,000 train 2,000 validate uh and then i go through that, so, and then I, I'm utilizing at first a, a pre-trained um, encoder, right? Which is in this instance, it's the like uh, OpenAI, their, their um, uh, whatever they open source is their uh, VIT, I think it, like their pre-trained encoder, but you can adjust that too, right? Like, you can adjust every single part of this, this uh, what you're looking at here. Like I have built this collab, this particular collab notebook that we're looking at here, uh, like literally as its own, um, model right so you can swap encoders you can add more head families you can evolve feature space operators like there's a lot that you can add on and adjust to this notebook uh, that if you understand what's going on here it's easy to um, adjust these things within it right and I, I built that out kind of purposely this way and then so when we do our first test we run our essentially our auto encoder that's never been seen seen on uh, this particular data set it gets 57.8 percent accuracy like right off of the bat right that's that's what it's it's um default and then perhaps this auto encoder has seen some part of this data set i would imagine that it did 
during its training, right? Um, and then so with that, we get it to 57.86. Uh, and then that's uh, off of the, the data set alone. And then so we say, okay, here's the shape of the data set, right? And then that's where we take our measurements. And then so essentially in this instance, I'm just taking a, a snapshot of this data set from different measurement standpoints and then creating that and then feeding that to the model. So this model is never actually being trained on the data set itself, which is the most important element of this, right? I cannot understate this enough in these videos. These models are not actually touching this data set themselves. They're touching the geometric shape of the data set that I'm giving based off of the data set shape. And then from there, uh, our first test is so that it, it, it tests the three heads uh, and then it figures out that this head has the highest accuracy, 81% baseline overall. So it chooses to refine that head, I had RFF in this instance. Uh, and then it takes that, uh, that head and then it uh, runs it secondarily through our genetic mutation uh, and our genetic algorithm. And then we bump it up at the end to 82.7%. So we squeeze like an extra like 2% accuracy or like a percent and a half accuracy out of the model, highlighting 100% within this, right? That, so this this extra squeeze is uh, like 300% more compute <laughs> overall than just to get to this. Like that, and that's very important to, to highlight within this, right? If we just leave it here, we cut it off, uh, this would compute, this computes uh, in about like uh, less than a minute overall for all of it, right? So that's including measuring, taking this 10,000 uh, like labels data set, measuring it, getting a snapshot of that data set, that takes like 15 seconds overall to, to under, okay, here's the shape of the data set, right? And then it's like, okay, now train on the shape of that data set, that takes like an extra 15 seconds. And then now, uh, create a genetic algorithm based off of that and train yourself further, that takes like an extra like two minutes on top of that, right? Like, or three minutes on top of that. Like it just, it adds um, a lot of computational inefficiencies just to squeeze out these small extra gains. And that's where you get into this at this point, right? If you just leave it here, uh, you're gonna like across the hardest data set that you can, I'm, I'm getting it up to like 82, 83%, like almost immediately, right? If you want to squeeze an extra one, two, three percent out of it, you can do that, but you're going to pay a price. <laughs> and that's just like how it goes um, within this uh, period. I think that there are ways to adjust that and change that, right? So I'm going to, so here overall, like, I mean, here is uh, everything related to this 100% MIT licensed, open sourced, et cetera, right? And uh, I want to talk about that here for a second within this because I think that's very important right <laughs> like so within this all of these discoveries these things that I find right the, the very first thing that I do is like I, I open source them I MIT license them uh, I don't file for patents for them like uh, etc <laughs> right? and then there's a, a few reasons up front within that like a few primary big primary reasons to me right number one uh, and primarily Overall, I don't feel like I own the math, right? Like I, I don't own math, so none of this is mine overall. It's just stuff that I've found within this. Number two, uh, within that is, uh, it would hinder the uh, spread of knowledge within these things to uh, do that overall, right? It just, it, it throws up gates that uh, don't need it. Like I wouldn't be able to uh, advance these things and move these things forward without um, AI help overall. It's the flat out bottom line within this, right? You're dealing with physics overall and everyone is in that same boat. So, so like every single person that patents around this, I think like you're throwing yourself into a question mark anyway, right? Uh, I, I don't think your patent would ever hold up, honestly. Like <laughs> it's the simplest bottom line, right? If someone ever actually truly pressed your patent, you're gonna lose in court. Like, like you're wasting your time is honestly how I look at that, right? And I don't think there's a single person out there that is uh, immune to that actual argument. Uh, number three and important within this too, for me, uh, is is that like, uh, who cares about your patent, right? Like, 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 like uh, okay. Uh, I work with companies all of the time within these things, right? So, uh, hey, every, I'm gonna say right now on this video, every single company that exists, what you're looking at here, hey, this, this right? Like all of this, uh, no one else on the planet can currently do this. I can take any data set and I can create a snapshot of it and boom, I can train a model in like 15 seconds for you, uh, uh, like uh, for zero cost, as opposed to 
anyone else in the world. All businesses, hey, just come to me, right? Like, uh, you know that I can do this, but hey, nobody cares. See, <laughs> like uh, within that, uh, just because you can, uh, and I can show that I can, I can show that I can up and down, right? Nobody cares. <laughs> like, uh, I don't make any, like, none of my revenue comes from these things, right? It's all like uh, businesses, like, okay, like, uh, can you connect ChatGPT to it? That's what they want from this. Like, that's what they're going to pay you for uh, in the end out of this. There's not a singular person in the world that's going to say, oh, that's great. Here's some money for that, bro. <laughs> like, it, it, that's not, uh, I've been at, in this and at this for a while. Uh, that's not how it works. And, and uh, good luck with that. <laughs> like, you're just not going to make money uh, on that aspect. Nor, like, I mean, that's just not how it works overall, right? That's just the, the bottom line within these things. And then so like for all of those things and all of these reasons, that's why I open source these things. A lot of people send me stuff around this too. Like this, this is starting to get um, a bigger and bigger topic, right? And then I like uh, flat out, the reason why I, I ignore a lot of that is like, uh, I'm not trying to deal with anybody else's patent, with you dealing with patents, with your patent. Like I don't give a rip about your patent. <laughs> like. Uh, if you are patenting your stuff and you like, don't ever send it to me. Like that's, that's the simplest and most bottom line way that I can do this, do, say that overall. Right. Uh, I don't care about your patent. I don't want to see your patent. Um, I don't like, I, I, I don't like, uh, no one cares about your patent. If I wanted to actually do what you're doing, I would just simply just develop a simple, a, another mathematical way to do it. Like that. And that's the, the, the bottom line within that. Right. Like if I truly want to do, what you're doing, there's like, uh, I mean, the, the most simplest way that I can break it down so that a majority of people would understand, right, is, is that if you look at marijuana, right, there's Delta, what, like Delta 7, Delta 8, Delta 9, Delta 10, right? Delta 11, right? Uh, this is the exact same thing. Like if you create Delta 7, I create Delta 8, Delta 9, Delta 10, Delta 11, Delta 6, Delta 5, Delta 4. And it's just all simple tweaks and variations that would get all around it, right? Uh, it's literally the same thing within this. Your patent in this instance applies to your literal chemical makeup within this. Your entire chemical makeup, all of this is math, right? Every single part of this, uh, this entire equation is math. Like, uh, and then, I mean, like what we're looking at here, right? What I'm giving you very specifically here uh, is this autoencoder with a genetic algorithm attached to it. Drop the genetic algorithm attached to it. All of a sudden it's something different. <laughs> Change uh, some of the mathematical policies that I'm utilizing. All of a sudden it's something different, right? And I do utilize some some unique math within this. Right? And, 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 and I highlight that uh, within this as well, right? Like, so like specifically here, like, uh, in the practical notes here, like this memory safe protometric, which utilizes a vectorized diagonal Mahalanobis trick to avoid uh, a mathematical problem that you run into with the tensors, right? It's, it's like, uh, essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm utilizing vectorization within the latent space within this, right? Uh, and, and then I utilize this particular math, mathematical trick in order to do this. There's 50 different tricks that you could do in order to do this. You could utilize the exact same thing that I do, just change this, that, boom, it's 100% different, nothing I can do about it, right? Uh, and then that's the same, like, I, I don't know, like, it just, like, um, highlighting it and pointing that out overall, right? Uh, I don't know, there's no point in, in, like, going that route to me overall, and it just, it doesn't do any good. <laughs> you only shoot yourself in the foot uh, is the bottom line within that that I can say, right? Like, every single time that I've uh, tried or I'm like, you know, I'm going to like uh, patent this out or I'm going to hold out on this, et cetera. What ends up happening is some Chinese company just ends up doing my research like two weeks later overall anyway, then, right? And like, what are you going to do? Uh, okay, you patent out or you have some cooler concept that like, can, can be related to this or not, right? Um, like, uh, and then like uh, DeepSeek releases and, and <laughs> releases essentially your research two weeks from now. Uh, you decided to patent out. You didn't tell anybody because uh, you're dumb. Uh, and then all of a sudden, like, uh, they do it and they do your same thing, right? All of this is based off of physics. <laughs> and then we're all making physics gambles within this. I'm either right or I'm wrong with my physics assumptions, right? I'm not like playing around with these things, making these things up out of thin air. This is uh, how I think that physics works. And then so if I'm right within this, I'm going to be right within the math that comes out of that. Same thing with everyone else, right? And then so if you're on the right track, you're on the right track. And then if you patent that out or you try to patent that out, you're going to lose. <laughs> I don't know how else to put that. Uh, but so uh, 
overall, here's Cal Autohead plus the genetic algorithm tuner. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.